You're watching FE Exam Prep with Anthony Fasano from Pass the FE Exam. Now, if you want to pass your FE Exam easily, no matter how good you are, and you don't apply these best tips and strategies that I'm about to share, it might take you more than just one attempt. In this video, I will be talking with Nabil Newton Khatib, a licensed professional engineer, about how you can utilize the TTTT, that's four T's framework, to be successful in your FE exam and other career efforts as an engineer. This Pass the FE exam video is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. All right, so let's jump right into today's episode of Pass the FE Exam. Nabil, welcome to the show. Thanks, Anthony. Um, I'm very, you know, grateful and honored to be here with you. Um, so I'm just going to share my some of my expertise. I don't have tons. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're happy to have you. So start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. What field of engineering are you in? So I am Nabil Khatib. I go by Newton. I am a structural engineer. I'm a bridge a structural engineer. And i um, I finished my undergrad in civil engineering. I got also my um, master in structural, and I'm working towards my PhD, hopefully in the next couple of years or so. Yeah, awesome. So take us back. Why did you decide to take the FE exam? Was it a requirement of your job? What was your reasoning behind taking it? So since I started this, you know, journey, I know that I want to be on top of these, you know, exams, FE, PE, SC. I remember before I got into the um, the preparation for the FE, I was looking at the SC. So it's definitely a requirement from, you know, the school that I, you know, graduate. I graduate from University of Colorado. Uh, particularly in Denver, and they wanted us to take the FE before we graduate or at least attempt to take it, whether you fail it or you pass it. But I really had a lot of determination to pass it and kill it from the first time. Awesome. So you so you knew kind of early on that you were going to be, you wanted to become a licensed professional engineer. Yeah. I, my mentor, you know, Dr. Lee Cheng Lee, he is a PhD, PE, and SE on top of that PMP. So I always had these titles after his name to be like a mm -hmm. driven force for me. <laughs> I mean, I do think that's an important point because I think a lot of students at university may not be thinking about their license or their career. And if nobody is a mentor for them or if no one mentioned it to them, they may not be even know what the license is until it's until it's later on in their career. And as we may know, trying to get your F, trying to pass the FE exam later on in life can become a little bit more challenging. Mm -hmm. So it's good that you had the mentor to help you with that. Yep. Which kind of leads me into my next question. Based from everything you've heard, your experience, when do you feel is the best time to take that FE exam? So I always talk to my, you know, clients, you know, people that I mentor, most of them are a speech a speaker here in the Denver metro area. Um, the best time to take the FE is when you are, you know, undergrad or when you're still in college. If you're not having a chance to take it while you're like finishing your undergrad, take it before you leave the school because FE topics are pretty much what we learn um, in like in, in undergrad, you know, statics, mechanics of materials, dynamics, all these, you know, topics that we are familiar with we're while we're in, in school. But once we leave school, most likely you're not going to remember how to do, um, you know, maybe if you're not a structural engineer, how to design a reinforced concrete, you know, beam or something. Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great piece of advice. I mean, 
like Nabil said, when you're taking the FE exam, it just has an array of different topics on it. So like it's very related to your undergraduate where you're kind of getting a lot of the different types of engineering early on in your uh, undergraduate before you start specializing. And so the sooner you can take it either in school or right after school, I know the school that I went to, they literally had a bus for us to get us to the exam. That's how they were almost like requiring you to take it, which I'm grateful for at this point. I didn't realize the importance of it then, but I do now. Um, and it does become very difficult the further you get out of school because you're just not going to remember all that stuff and you're going to have to, you're going to have so many other things going on in life. It's going to become harder and harder to take the exam. And so with that being said, Nabil, if one does want to take it, let's say in their senior year, close to the end of their uh, university time, how can you kind of manage or how did you manage that when you're studying for the exam, you're trying to finish up school? Talk to us a little bit about that. So, Anthony, I always say this, and, and, and I say it in a, in a very humble way. Do not take my preparation as a guideline because I'm a very, very uh, technical guy. I love digging deep through equations, manuals, deriving these, you know, uh, equations. So my wife always keep, keep telling me that you're crazy about equations. Everything that you do in <laughs> life is equation. Even like a simple thing, you turn it to like a spreadsheet. You know, when we bought the house, I turn out the whole process to like equation and a spreadsheet, you know, interest rate and all that, you know, crap. So, but that's, that's away from the topic. So, I would highly recommend people who are trying to take the FE to give themselves at least two to three months preparation because you're going to be like taking classes. You're probably going to be like having your capstone, senior design, meeting with your group. So you don't want to really hammer and cram things in because it's not going to feel good on your end because you're at the end of the day, you still need to live your life. You don't want to stress your yourself so much where you cannot focus on so many things. And this is a huge topic that I always say, I, I you know, in my speeches, the T, 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 T. That's the strategy that I go always with. First T is terms, concepts. Identify what you are dealing with. Familiarize yourself with the terms, the concepts. The second T is templates. Build your own templates, meanings, mm -hmm. exercise, and practice problems. The third T is time. Time management is a huge issue that we face nowadays. And the fourth thing is trust. Trust yourself. You cannot skip any T here. You cannot go all the way to the trust while you did not practice. You cannot skip the, the third T, which is time, while you did not familiarize yourself with the concept. You cannot go and, you know, run marathon before you start walking, if that makes sense. You know, and that's, it's, it's clear as mud, right? It's, it's, it's super, you know, straightforward. If you cannot practice, you don't put in the work, you will never, ever, you know, get it. It's, it's a test that I always say it's the easiest test slash the hardest test. So it could be very hard. It could be very easy. I'm sorry. No, Keep no. I, I think I love the TTTT and let's see if I can remember it. I didn't write anything down. Um, you know, know the terms. That's the first T. Um, develop templates that can help you in your preparation, right? Manage yep. your time effectively, which is important. I think even beyond the FE, you're going to need to do that for sure. Um, and then the last one was, oh, hey, hold on. Let me, let me remember. Let me remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, template what is it i forgot the last one trust trust how could you trust forget yourself trust? you got to exactly. trust yourself i love i mean i'm a big proponent of frameworks and i do believe that it can be very helpful especially when someone has a lot going on in their life like a student who's trying to graduate having a simple framework in place to help you and the one thing that i'll add to everything that nabil said there was try to leverage that winter break if you're going to do this in your senior year, right, you may be able to take the FE a little bit earlier in the semester, not necessarily at the end of the semester, and then use that winter break to kind of prepare for it. And then this way, when you're at the end of the semester, senior year, you got other stuff going on, you got a capstone project, you're, you're partying because you're ready to get ready to graduate. You've already got that FE exam behind you. And following those four T's sounds like a great way to do it. But really, a lot of things in life do come them down to time management. And we're going to be, uh, Nabil is also going to be on our other channel past the PE exam. And that's just a whole nother process where you're going to probably be going back to those same four T's and trying mm -hmm. to manage just another process while you're kind of in the depths of your and career. Anthony, I'm sorry. I want to interrupt here. And I, I, I always say, it's remember that you are a human and you need 
certain things to fulfill your desires and desires cannot be only one category so as a as a you know structural engineer i have a desire to become an sc you know i did my fe i did my pe and now i'm look, i mean i'm working on my sc it's a desire so mm-hmm. do not forget your other desires so always manage your time accordingly and make sure that you are also living your life do not you know, just sit in your office. I always get people say, do I have to practice 12 hours a day in order to pass the FE or the PE? No, okay. you can practice a couple of hours a day and just build that trust. And once you build it, you're going to get to a point, you like solve 20 problems in only one hour. Hmm. All right. So all that being said, Nabil, let's assume a bunch of our listeners are, you know, they're going to take the FE exam. They're either getting ready to study or they're already studying. What are some tips that you can give them in terms of the process of studying for the FE exam? It actually comes back to the four T's. So you want to remember that you won't be able to pass the test without familiarizing yourself with the handbook. The NCS is making it, you know, easier, harder, whatever you want to take it in a different way. Some people say it's 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 easier that I have this 502 pages, 500 plus couple of pages here that I need to familiarize myself with. And it's not all for the civil. It's not like you need to get all these 500 pages because that's the FE handbook, right? But some people think it's, it's harder. I could write my own notes and I'll take them, especially for the PE, the CBT versus the PMP, you know, the paper and pencil. So that's another thing that you want to also focus on, familiarize yourself with the thing that you're going to be tested on. Don't feel like, oh, I'm I'm pretty good with statics. I'm pretty good with mechanics. I'm pretty good with concrete. But you're not going to be able to take your notes, your own notes, and take them to the test where you can use them handy dandy. No, that's not the case, right? So Mm -hmm. the case is to familiarize, number one, familiarize yourself with the handbook. Number two is to plan you know, a good time frame to not stress yourself. Because if you're stressed, no matter how much you put in work, it's not going to go to to like 100% efficiency. Three is time management. You got to make sure that you have five, five hours and 20 minutes, I think. So you do the math. It's like less than three minutes per each question. It's like mm-hmm. 2.91 if I, if I remember the number correctly. And then if you cannot finish the question in two or three minutes, let's say, you're not going to be able to pass the test no matter how good you are. I have clients, they come to me and say, well, I know how to solve these questions, but I'm failing. Time? Yes, it is the time. Yeah. Right away. Yeah, no, that's dead on. I mean, you could be the smartest engineering student in the world, but if you don't know how to manage the time properly on the exam, it's not going to work for you. And I think going back to what Nabil said right in the beginning there about familiarizing yourself with the tools that you have available, which in this case is that handbook. And I believe, Nabil, you can go to the NCWS website and you can get a copy of that handbook, yep. correct? Yes, that's a free version on the NCS uh, website. So you just go there and log in. On your right, on the dashboard, on your right, the third category, one, two, three, the reference view, reference handbooks, and it should be the first, uh, the third one, which is version 10.2 for the FE civil. And, and you can see the other FE. And you could see the other FE, and that's something during the exam that you'll have access to on a computer, correct? So you can yes. search for terms, correct? Exactly. Yep. So it's a searchable. Uh, Control F is your friend. It's going to be a split screen between questions on the right and the left is going to be your um, NCS handbook. And it's searchable whether you want to do like um, certain words, whether you know exactly what sections you go through like the table of contents. Awesome. All right. So lots of good stuff there for our listeners to unpack and hopefully use as they prepare. So Last thing here, for some of our viewers that might still be up in the air about the entire process of obtaining their professional engineering license, of course, the FE being that first exam of the two, what would you tell them based on your career to date as a professional engineer related to whether or not to really take the time to pursue their PE license? Absolutely. You know, this is a really hot topic. There is always, I I keep saying, one, two, three, four, five things that I 
need to address in order to fully understand how crucial the PE is. Number one, prestige. People, when they look at your name and after your name PE, they respect you more with all respect. Right. And there we go. <laughs> right. I don't have it. <laughs> so that's the first thing. Second thing is the career development. You could ask for more, you know, uh, uh, responsibilities because now you're a P. And the third thing that a lot of people look at it, authority. You cannot mm -hmm. sign. You cannot seal draw drawings. You cannot open your own firm if you're looking for that agility without having the professional engineering license. Number four, career flexibility. You could say, you know what? I'm not working for this company. They're not, you know, um, they're not giving me what I'm looking for. They're they're just, you know, ignoring me or whatever. Once you fill in your application, you have your PE, two letters, simple and easy. People are going to look at you differently. And lastly, money, dollars. Nobody does not like money, right? More money. Absolutely. No, those are all really valid reasons. And the one thing that I'll mention too is, is don't let people talk you out of chasing the PE license as a student because you're not going into a certain type of engineering. I know that when I was practicing, where I was studying in college, a lot of my friends were going into construction and they kept saying, ah, you don't need a license when you're in construction. The problem with that is, is that if you don't get your license now, it's going to be very difficult for you to go back and get it. And who knows what you're going to do in 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, right? Yep, you're absolutely right. The SE is now being you know a serious thing for a structural engineer. People keep saying, oh, my goal is the PE. I'm just going to need to get the PE and stop. They're not looking for the SE. Some states are ready, you know, you know, force people to get the SE in order to seal drawings for structural engineers. You know, Chicago or Illinois, Georgia, now, you know, Washington State, uh, Utah. So, yeah. and, you know. Important. So, yep. you know, when you're young, it's the time to learn these things, get these licenses and credentials, build your authority, like Nabil said, and set yourself up for a lot of flexibility and success in your career. So remember Nabil's four T's, right? We got to think mm -hmm. about the terms. You got to think about the templates. You got to manage your time effectively, and you got to trust in yourself and trust in the process that you've created. Yeah. Good memory, and Anthony. if if you do that, you will be successful. So, once again, Nabil Khatib, Nabil, thank you so much for spending some time with us here on Pass the Epi Exam. Not a problem. It was my pleasure. Thank you, sir. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will answer more of your Epi Exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below that I will read and respond to in future videos. Maybe there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a question you need answered. Pass the FE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE Exam.